Hi everyone, welcome back to my series, The Decades of Action Challenge, inspired by the Epic Film Challenge uh, that's uh, being done by uh, Forkerball and Razorwire Reviews. Um, they are uh, going through a book called 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, uh, watching the films listed therein, making videos about them. Uh, I am doing a different series, which is called A History of Violence, which is written by Tom Brehan for avclub.com. Uh, it's about uh, what he would consider the most important action movie of each year, uh, started with 1968 and moving forward to the present. I am on 1984 uh, for this video, uh, and it is The Terminator, directed by James Cameron, his second feature film, though I really sort of consider it his first because uh, he had you know a lot of uh, difficulty uh, with Piranha 2, The Spawning. Really not his movie got taken away from him. He had to sneak into the editing room to recut the movie uh, just to sort of preserve his good name, I suppose. Um, but he met Lance Henriksen uh, on that film and cast him in The Terminator and a subsequent film, Aliens. Um, he also uh, made uh, uh, his first film with Michael Biehn uh, on this uh, movie, The Terminator, who went on to be in uh, Aliens in the Abyss, and of course, the first film he worked on with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, this is uh, the first Arnold Schwarzenegger movie uh, that I'm doing for this series, um, or Brehan uh, picked for his, for his series. There'll be more to come, of course. Um, Schwarzenegger uh, plays a robot sent from the future um, around the year t 2029 after um, humanity and most of the civilized world has been decimated by nuclear war uh, that was started by an artificial intelligence that wanted to wipe out human beings. Um, human beings are regularly hunted down and they have to live uh, underground in the dark and do whatever they can to survive, trying to figure out ways to uh, destroy the machine intelligence so that humanity can be free again. Uh, and when they come very, very close to succeeding, the um, artificial intelligence called Skynet decides to send a robot back in time because the key figure in the human resistance is a guy named John Connor who was born in the mid-80s and so it decides to send a robot infiltrator back in time to 1984 to kill this person's mother before he's born. Uh, thus, you know, neutralizing the resistance, uh, the human resistance against itself uh, before it even begins. Um, so yeah, this, this key figure right here, this key figure named John Connor uh, is uh, what everyone's got their panties in a bunch over. Uh, <laughs> when the uh, human resistance figure out what happened, um, they use the same time travel gear to send a human back in time to protect this young woman uh, so she can give birth and the resistance will be preserved in the future. That is the time travel logic of this movie. Um, the first time I ever saw the film, uh, it was the edited for television version. It happened to be on TV, I recorded it on a VHS tape, and even though it had, you know, the bloodiest violence and, you know, some cursing and some nudity cut out of it, it was still extremely effective. And when I rewatched it earlier this week, it's still very, very effective. I really love this movie a lot. Um, I can't help but feel like the confidence that James Cameron uh, shows in making this movie so well, uh, being it so early in his filmmaking career, really kind of... Um, reminds me of Tarantino's confidence in making Reservoir Dogs as his first film, despite the very, very limited budget and resources that he had. Of course, there's no CGI uh, effects to take advantage of. Um, the special effects were all models and puppets and stop motion and rear projection and, you know, old school stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, we would see, you know, what we see in the most recent Terminator movie, which was lots of CGI. CGI uh, uh, changing of, of actors, CGI robots, CGI uh, vehicles, uh, CGI explosions, CGI action. Um, yeah, it's nice and old school. Um, and uh, there's a lot of, about this movie to like. Um, the main character is played by Linda Hamilton. Uh, her name is Sarah Connor. She is, of course, the woman in question who is uh, due to uh, give birth one day to the leader of the human resistance. And um, her protector from the future is uh, Kyle Reese, played by Michael Biehn. Uh, and they, he finds her, basically, before the Terminator can get to her. Uh, he you know, protects her. They go on the run, um, trying to avoid uh, populated areas, trying to avoid you know, uh, being uh, tracked down by this machine. Uh, which has human skin, and so therefore it looks human. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Schwarzenegger, as the robot, is uh, trying to figure out exactly where they will pop up next so uh, it can strike and uh, take her out as it's, it's programming. Um, 
Uh, now, the action highlight of this movie for a lot of people is the scene in the police station. Um, Sarah manages to uh, um, get taken into police custody along with Reese. Um, and she tells the story to the cops uh, as it's told to her by Michael Bean's character. And of course, they think that he's completely delusional and that the guy who's attacking her is wearing body armor and has, is on drugs, which is why he doesn't feel any pain. <laughs> uh, so they say, don't worry, you'll be fine in here. And then the Terminator shows up at the police station and mows down cop after cop after cop with a couple of assault rifles. Uh, and uh, yeah, despite the fact that they're, you know, machine gunning him. You know, he doesn't even hardly react, and they're just like, <laughs> yeah, if they lived long enough, they would probably say, oh my god, what the heck was that? Was she right? <laughs> um, but uh, actually, the highlights of, of, the, uh, of the action for me are not that particular scene. Um, there's a scene earlier on where the Terminator first tracks Sarah down um, in a nightclub called Tech Noir. Um, and the music that um, they pick for this scene is really, really great. It's very, very complimentary to the action. First of all, the lyrics, you got me burning, you got me burning with your burning heat, uh, kind of um, <laughs> echoes what's happening in the future, you know, with the nuclear uh, destruction and everything like that, and humans being, you know, taken out by laser guns and everything like that. Um, <laughs> but um, there's a great moment where the, um, where the uh, verse kind of... Uh, kicks up a notch, and it's at that moment when Schwarzenegger strides very purposefully right in the nightclub and stands right in front of the fence, uh, the uh, little uh, chain link barrier between um, the outer part of the club and the, the inner part. Uh, uh, that's a great moment right there. And then this action shifts to slow motion as he's scanning the crowd, moving through, looking for her. And the music, the music by Brad Fidel, a great score by Brad Fidel. He scored also the second Terminator movie and True Lies by James Cameron. Um, he, uh, you know, it becomes more ominous. It's this kind of pulsating, you know, electronic score uh, that has these sort of long sustained notes. And at one point, the song and the uh, <laughs> and the uh, um, and the and the uh, music, the score, are complementary to each other. They hit the same note at the same time with this sort of sustained note right as Sarah notices that there's someone watching her, and then the Terminator advances through the crowd. He sees a woman sitting at the table, thinks it might be her, moves closer through all the dancers, and at that point the song gets quieter and quieter, and the music gets louder and louder until you can't hear the music at all, you just hear the score. And then he pulls out his gun, gets ready to fire. It's a really, really intense scene. Um, and then, of course, all the action and shooting starts. Um, my other favorite set piece in this movie is close to the end. Um, Terminator, at that point, has suffered a lot of damage. The, uh, the humans have so far managed to, you know, be okay for the most part, you know, our main humans. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, the Terminator gets blown up in a truck, and all of its flesh and its uh, uh, muscles have been burned off of it, and it's now just basically a robot skeleton walking around all on its own. And it stalks them and uh, tracks them down to this uh, factory, <laughs> this machine factory where they uh, try to hide inside. And then it gets blown in half and it's missing its lower uh, body and it's only got one functioning arm and yet it's still crawling after Sarah, you know. <clears throat> you know, just, uh, just won't stop. And um, at that point it really sort of strongly resembles, uh, you know, the slasher movies that it probably drew some inspiration from, you know, with the um, killer that, you know, gets hurt over and over again but doesn't even seem to feel it and just keeps coming after uh, the uh, its potential victims. Um, yeah, there's lots of really great cues of music in the movie uh, throughout the whole thing. Of course, I've seen this movie a bunch of times, so I'm really familiar with a lot of the um, particulars of each scene, uh, the shots, the cuts, the score, not just the dialogue and the action. Uh, so uh, it's a very enjoyable experience for me re-watching this movie. There was this um, post um, on social media a, a few weeks ago in which uh, people uh, were asked, so if you had to pick your favorite movie from each year starting with for, starting from when you were born, what would those movies be? And for 84, I was I, I first thought of Ghostbusters, but I thought, you know what, I like The Terminator even more. I really, really like The Terminator a lot. Um, of course, Terminator 2 uh, was a very, very successful film along with this one, uh, and that is Brehan's pick for 1991, but before we get to that, of course, there's um, 85 uh, next week, and that will be Rambo First Blood Part 2, um, which is the sequel to First Blood, uh, which I did for 82, and which Brehan did for 82 as well. 
Um, yeah, don't know what else to say about this movie except it's really, really great and I really enjoy it a lot. Uh, and uh, if you haven't seen it, you're really missing out because it's a, it's a really good one. Um, so that's it for now. Uh, Cameron's uh, also got uh, an addition to um, uh, in addition to uh, Terminator 2, it also has Aliens on Brehan's list. And by the time, uh, you know, obviously uh, um, Brehan's only up to about the year 2000 right now in his list. Uh, his next um, article, he posted his uh, article on uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon today, and he uh, suggested at the end of his uh, article that the next one would be The Fast and the Furious from 2001. So I have a few more weeks to see what his pick for 2009 will be, but I'm betting it's going to be Avatar, which, of course, is another James Cameron film. Um, could be wrong about that, but we'll see. Uh, but seeing as how he picked um, The Fast and the Furious for 2001, that means that I've correctly guessed 12 out of 19 of his picks so far. Starting with 83, I've picked 12 of them accurately, which is about 63%, which isn't terrible. You know, it's better than 50. Um, I, I'm sure I'll get more wrong in the future. We'll see about that. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, and uh, you can uh, read Brehan's article on The Terminator. Uh, I've linked that below along with my Facebook page and the uh, playlist with all these videos on it if you want to uh, see more of them. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again next week with uh, Rambo First Blood Part 2. Take it easy.